Erev Tov Chabrim. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. And uh, Obama blames Russia for hacking, says uh, response won't be public. Uh, President Barack Obama actually today came out claiming that the uh, CIA, the different intelligence agencies, have proof that Russia was the one that actually hacked the DNC. But he also claims that they did not compromise the election itself. But in fact, Obama is blaming Russia for all the leaks that have been given to WikiLeaks, which Julian Assange clearly has denied Russia's involvement of giving that information over. But he also goes a little further on to say that they can't disclose the information on how they know Russia did it. Well, because according to President Barack Obama, and that is the United States, it would compromise uh, some of their... Uh, top secret information. They cannot do that. So really, it even goes so far as to say that it could not be proven in a court of law to begin with what they were able to find. Well, that just really sounds more suspicious more and more as you go. But he does promise a retaliation. A retaliation, he said, that a part be known and part will not be known, but the Russians will know it. Tit for tat, I suppose. But the problem is, if Russia did not do it, then where is the tit for tat? Will Russia then, in response, respond back to the U.S. as well? Very difficult to say. Anyway, guys, uh, this evening I was planning on going into the issues that I've been watching at the State Department that is happening, as I mentioned to you this morning, John Kirby's statement there to Saeed, and how Saeed pretty much had to bow down to John Kirby and not make any waves there. I guess he's worried about being thrown out of the uh, State Department, being allowed to ask questions. But instead, because of Donald Trump's latest choice for uh, the ambassador to Israel, none other, good old Jewish boy there, uh, uh, that happens to be David Friedman, who is no political experience whatsoever. In fact, he's a bankruptcy attorney but he's a very much uh, right-wing hardliner and pro-Israel, definitely anti-two-state, and much, very much, I believe, pro-settlement as of, as of well. Now, it's just really odd what's going on in the Trump uh, presidency. In one moment, I want to be able to applaud his decision here because I have never been in favor of a two-state solution. In fact, I think it should be one state and Palestinians should have the same citizen rights as any other Israeli would have. Uh, but, of course, this is just seems to be getting nowhere as far as that goes. And then again, we have to look at the biblical applications of this as well because in the biblical application in Daniel, I believe it's 11.39, it clearly states that this uh, one basically military power uh, is controlled by this religious system that will divide the land for gain. And that's exactly what has happened, not just Israel, but even the surrounding territories, Syria, uh, Jordan, uh, Israel, Palestine, Palestinian state, etc. All has been just divided up for gain, whatever they decide they want to divide it up as. It's kind of interesting because when I was listening to John Kirby earlier today in the State Department address, one of the things that he made mentioned, uh, another question that Saeed had asked, and that was if, for example, uh, Bashar al-Assad were to stay in power, would he get to be a part of the election process or the regime change? Isn't it funny? They talk about President Assad as if he really has no right in the country to begin with. The United States will decide who stays in power. I've just really been uh, blown away by some of the things that I'm seeing there. But at any rate, here as far as uh, uh, Mr. Friedman goes, he's a very he was a very much a regular contributor there on uh, Arut Shiva, Israel National News, as a writer there. He's contributed many articles there, and often he always sided uh, with a single state, never in favor of a two-state solution. Which again, I think that's a smart move to begin with. Because really the only reason why they're trying to do a two-state solution is because the Vatican would like to have full control of Jerusalem, which is also part of the resolution by the United Nations 181 that was signed in 1947 when they were dividing up the land for gain. But on Fortunately for the Vatican, that never came through. Why? Because in 1967, a curb got thrown into this uh, this negotiation when Israel, in the 67 war, pushed back the the uh, the Arabs that were living in Jerusalem and took over Jerusalem. 
Uh, it was a major defeat for Rome, and they've been trying to figure out how to deal with that issue ever since. They've tried all kinds of means, everything from the three antifadas that have taken place uh, all the way to now, they have actually come up with a diplomatic solution, and that is coming through the liberal Jews, which Mr. Friedman is definitely not part of that liberal agenda. And in fact, in his own statements there, he likens those liberal Jews in America to much like the uh, uh, the uh, Jews that were turning in other Jews during the Holocaust there. Uh, I thought that was kind of an interesting analogy, the way he put it there. But clearly, the Vatican lost that, and so what they began to do is to work on those liberal Jews, both in the United States and in Israel, and they came up with the Nostra Aetate, which they signed on the 50-year anniversary of when Pope John Paul XXVI, I believe it is, actually started this uh, campaign to try to find another way uh, to gain control of Jerusalem. And of course, the uh, Oslo Accords, the famous Oslo Accords there, where there Shimon Peres not only signed the agreement for a two-state solution with then uh, uh, Yasser Arafat, the leader of the PLO, but even sent a, t uh, a telegram or a wire communication to the Vatican promising them Jerusalem as well. Joel Bannerman, the late Joel Bannerman and Barry Chamish pointed this out, but of course later, Shimon Perez, late Shimon Perez, also denied any of that ever being true. The question is, is what's going on in the world and where are we at? And for those of you that would like to stick to the next part of the broadcast here, uh, we're going to share it here on Israeli News Live. I want to look at the prophetic sides of the implications of where we are right today and what I think may be coming down the pipe next. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benin. You're watching Israeli News Live.